All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is Monday, July 3rd, day before 4th of July. Get ready to get your fingers blown off, my friends. <laughs> 4th of July, man. I just crack up. It's like, it's the same fireworks every year. Like they don't, uh, they don't seem to have anything new. You know, it's just like, boom. Ooh, wow. Ooh, <laughs> fireworks. I do like fireworks, but uh, I like the fucking good shit. Like the M80s, M100s, uh, the brick of firecrackers, the, the bottle rockets, the Roman candles. I love all of that shit. The illegal fireworks. Those are the only good ones. Isn't that hilarious? It's funny when you're touring around America, they have all these firework stands. Like out by my mom's house, I was when I was out there uh, before my mom passed, uh, I'd be driving around her area and they just had firework stands middle of the summer. Just or middle of the winter. I mean, <clears throat> not summer. It was it was winter. It was like December. And there was a guy just selling fireworks in a parking lot at like a Target. He had like a wood and uh, perforated steel shack just selling fireworks like like people are just bored on a monday hey let's let's go get some fireworks for tonight 24 7 fireworks all, all year round i never understood that or the halloween store just at any time i want to get ready for halloween in uh february <laughs> halloween store get out Anyway, uh, 4th of July, I hope you have a good one tomorrow. I always think of that uh, that firework. There's some weird fireworks. They're from like the 50s. The snakes that just burn toxic black smoke. You lit it. It was just a round circle. It looked like a cop drop. And uh, it would just burn a black stain into your driveway. Your dad would whip your ass. What the fuck you do to the driveway? <laughs> I don't understand the snake at all. Got to be one of the most genius inventions ever. That somebody was like, I'll just sell this as a snake. It's basically just a toxic smoke that leaves an ash be behind and they called it a snake. And then there is the other one, uh, the log cabin. You just lit them like top of the log cabin, <laughs> like sparklers would come out of it. Fucking fireworks. I love it. I told the story before. I had a neighbor. He built this, uh, his own cannon. An actual, like, it was a cannon. You put shit in it. It would just shoot, like, like bombs out of it. He was like the neighborhood star. Every neighborhood had that neighborhood star, right? That would just do uh, the over-the-top explosions. It was like a couple, maybe... Uh, you know, biker looking dudes and their son looked like something like Sam Elliott out of that movie Mask with Cher. And they would just be down in the cul-de-sac, completely blowing everything up. Just everything. <laughs> anyway, 4th of July, it's coming. And uh, I still remember one of the greatest 4th of Julys ever for me was uh, me and like 20 guys went down to Riverside with hands full of mushrooms and just two trunks of, uh, of Roman candles. And we took the mushrooms and one group of guys were on one side of the street and the other group was on the other side around hedges and trees and everything. And we just went full Vietnam War, <laughs> shooting at each other on mushrooms, just fucking fried freaking the neighbors out like our houses are gonna burn down we all got fucking long hair we're drinking mushroomed up just hours of firework wars i'll never forget it casey chaos from amen was there my good friend bill fold who now is uh one of the kings of coachella and uh power trip and all of that and a bunch of other guys john butler the finger man 
John Butler from Roxanne and uh, his cover band, Boogie Nights, great guitar player. But man, that was a 4th of July. Everybody has that 4th of July memory. You know, another good one would be uh, going to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk on 4th of July up in uh, Northern California, just riding the giant dipper eating all kinds of fucking junk food, which by the way, I went to Disneyland last week. First time I've been about five years since COVID. I used to go quite a bit with Steve Henry. He worked at Disney and uh, he would get us in free and we'd get free parking and 30% off everything. So I have not been since COVID and I went and there was some interesting things going on at Disneyland. And uh, first of all, I love the place. I shit on it all the time for comedy, but I do love the place. And I love the memories that uh, uh, I have from going there. I have a photo I found at my mom's house recently. It was me there in July 70, 1970. And I'll post that up later. But there I am at Disneyland the first time. There's like a dude behind me that looks like a full-blown modern-day hipster. He looks just like Bill Burr's uh, assistant uh, producer on the uh, podcast. Uh, one of my good friends, Andrew Thimelis. The guy looks dead on the Thimelis. I sent the photo up to Burr and I was like, yeah, it turns out Thimelis was my babysitter in 1970. We were both laughing. But uh, so I went to Disneyland and, uh, you know, I just figured it was just going to be a madhouse. There's no... There's no more sleepy days, I think, at Disneyland. Like back in the day, I would go on the Monday after the NAMM show, which is the big, uh, you know, music gear convention, National Association of Music Merchants. So I'd go on the Monday and it would be kind of a shitty weather and it would always be empty. And me and like... Uh, Woody, my buddy Steve Goodrich, or, or whoever I would go with. I think Cliff Whittemore once, uh, a couple other people. We'd go to Disneyland on the Monday, and it'd be, like, empty. You could just ride the rides instantly. It was fun. But there's no more of that at all in this modern uh, insanity of Disneyland because people just take their kids out of school and they go. There's no more, you know. It used to be, like, you don't want to go in the summer. And you don't want to go during Easter break and you don't want to go do, uh, during Christmas break because it would be kids out of school. It'd be too packed, but you could literally go other times. It would be kind of dead, but not anymore. So this is the first time I've gone since the Star Wars land, the new Star Wars area, which I would say was it was OK. The first Star Wars ride we rode was kind of, uh, I don't know, it was it was not very good. It was just kind of like you're in one of those simulators. Whoa! But the second one, I would say, was pretty kick-ass. It was long and cool, and you were on this kind of cart that dropped and moved around. And not bad. And the whole Star Wars uh, land was cool. They had like Yoda cruising around and Mandalorian and all that. It's not bad. If anybody knows, I'm trying to figure out, because I've gone to Disneyland since 1970, what that area used to be, because it must have been just kind of like some buildings or something, because they didn't take anything out. Everything's still there. So uh, if you know, hit me on the uh, hit me on the DM or the email, Dean Del Rey at Yahoo.com. And uh, let me know. I was just curious. But I went to the Star Wars land. But this time, this is the first time I've been where they had this thing going on. And I'm going to give you this tip right now. They have a few different things. They got the fucking lightning pass. You can pay $30 and get on a ride immediately. $30. I heard it was $20 like six months ago. They jacked it to $30. And then they have the normal line. You're just waiting in fucking line. It says 75 minutes or whatever. And then they have um, this thing called single rider line. And I'm going to tell you, man, do yourself a favor. I don't care if you go with somebody that you're newly in love with. 
or uh, a, a, or you're babysitting or you bring in your kids or whatever, send these fuckers into the single line ride. We don't need to ride next to each other. We're going to be off the ride in a couple minutes and we'll talk about the ride. We don't need to to be right. I'm in the car with you. Fuck yeah, this was worth waiting two hours for. No. Go in the single rider line. A lot of times in the single rider line, you'll end up riding with your friend anyway. It's weird. And have each one of your friends in the single rider line. You will get on the ride in about 10 minutes, maybe five sometimes, maybe the maximum 15, maybe. But this is the only way to go. Man, I rode all kinds of rides instantly. Also, another tip is these, you know, Disneyland employees, they're allowed to have their phone on them while they're watching the lightning pass line. The lightning pass, you get a ticket, it's $30. You go up and you scan it, and then you go into the back of the ride. But these fuckers are just, you know, looking at TikTok and Instagram and texting. They're not even paying attention. So I'm just walk right by them and just go right in. They don't even lift their head up. I blazed right by him on the Star Wars ride. I was on the Star Wars ride in seriously like four minutes. And if they catch you, you just go, oh shit, I thought I, I thought I had it. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, that's the what are they gonna do? They'll go, oh sorry, no, you gotta go out there. And then they go back to texting. You know, nothing's gonna happen to you. Try the fucking sneak ins at all time in life. Sneak into the movies, sneak into uh the lines at the rides sneak into uh to the uh you know first seating uh on airlines that's what i do <laughs> i mean i got neck surgery like a year so they're like anybody that needs uh uh you know assistance or uh you know if you're all fucked up you can get on the plane first and i just i've got the photo of my my neck surgery, I just go, yeah, yeah, I just uh, had neck surgery. You got you to gotta do it, man. Because, I mean, I need a minute anyway to get my fucking bag up there. And uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Disneyland. Fucking, it was great, actually. I, I, I loved it. I got a sweatshirt. I've been wearing it for like two weeks straight. Actually, it's finally hot here in L.A., but it's been uh, chilly. Chilly six months in LA. Uh, I got the corn dogs. They have the best corn dogs on the planet at Disneyland. They are fucking stunning. I rode my all time favorite, Space Mountain, which is just a smoking ride, just an original cool ride, man. Just in the dark. And everybody uh, that's gone a lot, like myself back in the day, You've been in that situation where the car stops and they turn the lights on and you look around and you're just in basically a warehouse with tracks. It's so fucking weird. You can uh, YouTube it, Space Mountain with the lights on. And it's just like dumb. But with the lights off, it is full on kick ass. I do miss old school Disneyland. I like the uh, 50s, uh, mid 60s, 70s version of Disneyland, right up to probably Space Mountain. It, it, it's so much cool architecture in there and design. And uh, those old school rides, man, like the submarine. Ooh, man, I, I, yeah, you don't want to be going on the submarine these days, <laughs> right? You might get some kind of PTSD. Are we coming up? But uh, the submarine, the there was the old rockets that you'd get on man there you go up two floors they they got it now but it's low on the ground it's dumb the old days you'd get an elevator you go up two floors you get in these fucking rockets you can make them go up and down i rode the matterhorn which is just a a, a 60s classic man with the dumb fucking uh abominable snowman Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> i rode that I wrote Pirates of the uh, Caribbean, or is it Caribbean? Just depends who you're fucking hanging out with. Let's ride the Pirates of the Caribbean. They got it loaded up with Johnny Depp in there now. 
They they didn't have the Johnny Depp in court, the Amber trial. They didn't have that Johnny Depp. It's only pirate Johnny. But I wrote that. I wrote uh, the two Star Wars rides. Oh, I wrote uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which was fucking insane, man, to ride that. Because last time I rode that was on mushrooms. So I was like, I got to ride this thing sober, just see what's going on. Those little kooky carnival type rides rock with just the the effects of black light and uh, glow in the dark. Uh oh, hold on, Gertie. Oh. Mm, had to get Gertie. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was great though, man. They were open till midnight. I wish I could have stayed longer, but I had to go do a show. I wouldn't mind going again when they're open till midnight. And just really riding everything at like from 10 p.m. to midnight when it's kind of emptying out, like on a Monday or something when the families are just dust. There's no better people watching than at Disneyland. There is no better. It is epic. You got all types in there, man. And it is absolutely wild just to sit on a bench which, by the way, I am at that age where my favorite ride at Disneyland is a park bench. It's just the bench like, oh, yeah, this is a good bench. <laughs> Whenever I sat on the bench, I was thinking about when I had John Mayer on the podcast and I had that crazy, comfortable couch. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is a, this is a good couch. This is a comfortable couch. <laughs> anyway, Disneyland. Uh, it was good times. It was, I, I hope it's not the last time I go in life. I mean, I wouldn't mind going in uh, like towards the winter here in a few months, just going again. You know, those people that get the fucking year long pass and they go like 90 times. It's crazy. But man, it has changed. It was, it's so giant now. Like the parking is far away. You got the California Adventure Park. And then you have, you know, Disneyland. Then you have the Disney. Uh, Disney Boulevard or whatever, where there's, there's like restaurants and shit and the House of Blues. It, the thing is just a compound. It's amazing that guy fucking built that thing back in the 50s, Walt Disney. I'm going to build an amusement park with my vision, with these characters and shit. It's crazy. It's so funny to uh, to watch the kids. It, it, it's awesome to see them when they see Mickey or Donald Duck they're like three or four or five, six-year-olds are like, oh, there was one kid, he had an autograph book and the, and the Mickey was just autographed. And I was like, that's awesome. They're just fucking, they're just, that is the, the, the part of life. No bills, no fucking problems. People are paying for their food and shit and their tickets. And they're just getting autographs from Donald Duck and stuff. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, I went to Disneyland. I did I, I did a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks. I've just been kind of fucking just flying around all over the place. Bill and I went to the East Coast and then we did Sacramento this last weekend. It was 108 degrees. Just scorcher, man. Did some um arena out there in Lincoln. Dude, just 108. Man, uh, fantastic shows, really good. Uh, great arena, really a uh, nice new arena. And then what else? Oh, we're going to um, Allentown this week, Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, we will be at Atlantic City, an arena out there. So the, these are the uh, last of the Bill Burr shows that I'll be doing for a little bit. And then he's off to Europe and I'll be out headlining. And I'll be going to... Uh, the comedy seller from what the uh 17th through the 21st or something like that uh vegas i'll be there seven days i'm going to san francisco to see dead and co i'm looking forward to that i cannot stop talking about dead and co how hard they are killing it right now it's just mind-boggling how good they sound it really is i say it every episode but that's just the truth it is wild I, I do not know why they are so good on this run. Maybe they uh, they want to go out on a real high note. Maybe it's the drummer change. 
Maybe it's uh, everybody is completely focused. I don't know what it is. I would love to talk to the guys and ask them, how did they get to this level, man? But I'm going to see the last show on the 16th of the uh, of the band. Last show. And uh, people say, yeah, it's not going to be the last one. Yeah, yeah, I think it is, man. They're not like, uh, you know, they're not like these uh, 80s rock bands that need to do that to draw tickets. These guys have been selling out uh, stadiums and arenas for like 10 years now, or I don't know how long they've been together. I've seen them since the beginning. Maybe it's seven years or something. I don't know, but they don't need to do that that bogus farewell tour thing. So I think that's it, but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to going and seeing it. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, when I was in New York, I ran into uh, somebody and uh, maybe he's listening to this episode. Cause I didn't get his name, but I was eating breakfast. And this guy came in. Hey, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I'm out here in New York. Just did the Santana documentary. We screened it at the Beacon Theater, Santana played. And I was like, shit, man, I would love to have you on and talk about the Santana documentary that's getting ready to come out. But he didn't hit me on uh, Instagram or whatever. So I hope if you are listening to this, please reach out to me and let's get you on the podcast. Unreal, man. Santana doc, I cannot wait for that. I am, I am still just blown away by those early days of Santana with Greg Raleigh. There's just no fucking cooler. If you have not listened to that Santana live at the Fillmore, do yourself a favor, man. Get that record and get, of course, the Woodstock record, man. These, This band was just unbelievable. I still think Santana is underrated, even though everybody knows about him. A lot of people only know about him from the second wave with uh, Rob Thomas and Smooth and all that. But that early Santana, man, the, the Fillmore and the Woodstock performance are some of the greatest live shows I've ever heard or seen. You know, it's just crazy. And I'm looking forward to seeing the documentary. I hope there's some Greg Raleigh in there. I'm always looking for some Greg Raleigh. You know, guy is just a fucking living legend. Two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. So, um, Reach out. I, I didn't catch your name. It was early. I was eating some fucking oatmeal, getting ready to uh, fly somewhere, I think, and ran into this guy. So looking forward to seeing that. Shout out to Frank Bernacki. Thank you for your uh, your donation and some of the um, Patreoners. Brand new Patreoners. Let's see what we got here. Thank you so much, Kevin Connell and uh, Carl Stevenson. Thank you for joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Everything helps. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, yeah. Episode is brought to you by Ergo Hearing Aids. I don't know if you heard that episode a few episodes ago, but... I had uh, Ergo on. They make this incredible tiny hearing aid that just drops inside your ear and you can operate it all on your phone and they sound amazing. Everybody has hearing damage out there. And also, don't be afraid to go get hearing aids. Don't be like embarrassed. Like I've said before, I wear glasses. Who cares? We got to normalize hearing aids. A lot of people walking around can't hear shit because they're embarrassed of hearing aids. Why? I, you know, you get something, you go, dude, I hear so good now, you know, with hearing aids. Go to ergo.me slash Dean Delray. That's E-A-R-G-O dot M-E slash Dean Delray. And use the code Dean360 for a $360 off. That's a serious, serious discount on the Ergo 7, which is their newest state-of-the-art model. So ergo.me slash Dean Del Rey. Dean and 360, the numbers, 360. Get that discount. What else we got here? Let's talk a little bit about... Um, 
what do we have here? Oh, oh yeah, I did want to talk about that fucking candy at Disneyland. It was the first time I had been since I quit sugar. That was fucking torturous, man. Because when I get into Disneyland, I immediately want a candy apple, the red one. I don't, you know, car, caramel apples, okay. It gets all over you, caramel with the fucking nuts on the top. But I love that fucking rock hard red candy coating around an apple. So I would always get the candy apple and then I would cruise around. Then I would get um, saltwater taffy, just a bag of that shit. And then I would get a uh, Chiro, two, three, four Chiros in the day. Just a fucking idiot. Grown man just eating candy all day. I wouldn't even get a regular meal. Then I get a corn dog, which is fucking, you know, more shit for you. And then by the end of the day, I'd just be feeling so fucking nasty. It reminds me of this famous painting from one of my favorite painters, Todd Shore, a uh, painting called Sugar Shakes. And it's just this kid at the at the carnival and he's got cotton candy, a candy apple, some kind of fucking those suckers. Remember those suckers? They're like a big circle and they're like rainbow. They look like the gay flag and they're just a round circle. And it looks like they just, you know, that when they're making it, they just roll this stuff into a circle and then it gets hard. Uh, anyway, Sugar Shakes, Google it. One of the coolest paintings. So he's eating all this shit. And then uh, there's just devils around him. Ghost devils like, ah, eat that sugar kid. And he's like, uh, uh, uh. it's fucking great painting. It was my favorite painting that he ever did. It's right up there with the uh, Robert Williams, Russ Demon, and the Mark Ryden, my all-time favorite, Corky Ascends to Heaven. Those are the three paintings I absolutely love uh, from the juxtapose era of uh, that lowbrow art, the oil paintings that these guys do. Mark Ryden becoming an absolute giant king in that world. I have not seen Todd Shore in a long time. And uh, I haven't been to any of his gallery openings. I should look him up on Instagram and see what he's been up to. Him and his wife, Kathy Shore, who's also a great painter. But uh, I haven't seen any of those guys. But the amount of candy I would eat while I'm at Disneyland or Magic Mountain, which by the way, did you see that fucking roller coaster with the cracked fucking support beam? Oh my God, the car just goes around. Someone's just filming it. And the whole support beam just goes and opens with a giant, like California fault line looking crack. Just on there, like uh, it's in North Carolina, their highest and uh, craziest roller coaster. I mean, if somebody didn't happen to be filming that and just a few more times that thing fall fucking cracks away and the car just, Oh my God. That just lets you know, you know, they always say we uh, walk the tracks every morning and every afternoon. It's like, no, you don't, you don't, you don't walk the tracks. When I was young, they walked the tracks. I would see them out at magic mountain. We'd get in the parking lot at like eight, the gates would be at nine and we're just waiting so we can run to the most, uh, popular ride first so we didn't have to wait all day and you'd see fuckers walking the tracks and i'd be like that's the scariest job ever they don't even have like a harness or anything they're just walking the tracks inspecting it just scared. i got fucking you know sweaty palms thinking about it just so fucking scary unreal man anyway it had a giant crack in it it's just fucking that's some shit metal right there. That piece of metal, I don't know. It had to be like the, the weight of the G-force of the cars over the you know year or whatever, just flexing it and it finally just cracks. It could be a shit weld. I don't know. We will see. But uh, that was crazy. You can see that all over the internet. And uh, 
you know, I just think you think about that. And then you think about those carnivals that go around uh, the, you know, around on tour around America with those carnies setting up the zipper and the flying bobs and the, and the Megatron or whatever that one's called where you get in it and you lean up against the fucking wall and it spins fast and then the floor drops and, you know, and it's like a roundup. They called it roundup at Magic Mountain, but I think the later was like Megatron or something. All these rides to make you feel sick. Uh, I was at the Disneyland. They're like, you want to ride the teacups? I was like, fuck no. I want to feel good all day. I don't, you ride the teacups once and the rest of the day, you just feel like shit. You're just walking around the park like, oh God, I feel like shit. Ugh. The teacups, who likes that? Who likes these rides that make you feel nauseous and dizzy? Who the fuck? That's fun, man. I got to get on the teacups. I want to, I feel great right now, but I want to fix that. I want to feel like shit. Oh my God. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good 4th of July. I hope to see you guys out at some shows. I'll be in Utah. I'm finally going to Utah. Fucking bug in here. Um, I'm going to Utah. I'm going to do two nights in Utah at Boxcar Comedy, a new club. That's on my website, deandelray.com. I'm doing the Vegas run. Um, I'm doing something else too. I can't remember. I don't know. I'm fucking, I'm just grinding away, man. I'm just trying to get funnier. I'm just trying to get funny actually. And I'm trying to uh, get more shows and just keep going. That's all you can do, man. I'm all in. I put all the fucking poker chips. I've slid them into the middle. I'm betting on myself. Uh, I got no, uh, you know, I got no backup plan. I'm not looking for it. I do play the lottery, which is 522 million today. I got to go down and get a ticket. You can't win if you don't play. <laughs> fucking hate when people say that. You just can't win if you don't play. That's how I look at life, man. Can't win if you don't fucking gamble on yourself. So I'm all in. The chips are in. Well, here we are halfway through 2023. I'm going to be 58 in like seven months. This fucking is just going by. 58. A couple more years, I'll be 60. Hopefully, I'll be alive. I've been fucking gymming it, eating clean still. And uh, we'll see where we'll see what happens, man. That's all you can fucking do. There ain't no guarantees, right? There ain't no guarantees. And then maybe when I'm 60, I'll be one of those uh, those uh, motivational speakers. I'll, I'll think you get out there and go for it. I'm Dean Del Rey, the motivational speaker. <laughs> um, let's see here. What do we got? Oh yeah, man. I was uh. I wrote down some notes here because I'm just kind of, I don't want to miss anything, you know? And, uh, oh, I was, just saw that the Modelo is the number one beer in America now because, you know, all those fucking blockheads are boycotting the Bud Light because uh, of the trans model or something. I never even, I never even pay attention to the fucking insanity going there. I don't watch the news and I just grab little snippets here and there. Like what the fuck? I don't know who has that kind of time. I was talking to Eddie Bravo. I'm going to be on his podcast in a couple of weeks. I was talking to him about it. Like I just don't fight people on the internet. I don't, I don't, you know, let my blood boil. Like you motherfucker, libertard. I just don't do that. And, and these people, they're all basically, uh, you know, let, living their life by this book called the Bible, those rules, like the Bible doesn't, the Bible doesn't want it like that. It's, you know, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I remember the first time I saw that bumper sticker, I was like, who the fuck? But, you know, but like, 
it just took a shit. You know, they're like, you know, go woke, go broke. All that crazy shit, man. In the meantime, they're drinking Modelo now. That's the number one beer now. Modelo, made in Mexico, the same place they wanted to build the wall. We got to build a wall, keep these people out. But throw the Modelo over the wall because we need our beer. Which, by the way, Modelo is made by Anheuser-Busch, who owns Budweiser. They are Budweiser, you fucking blockheads. They're getting your money still. Fucking good. Yeah, but they, yeah. I'll go a Mexican before I go a trans. That's the that's the thought of them. You know, it's just crazy, unbelievable. Better not be a, a Hispanic trans. Mo fellow, Are you trying to call it Mo fellow? <laughs> oh my God, it's fucking nutty out there. It is nutty out there. Build a wall. Throw the Modelo over the wall, though. And sour cream and avocados and tacos. That can all stay. Fucking crazy, man. It is a crazy world we are in right now. You know? And, you know, like, most people don't even realize the left don't give a fuck about you and the right don't care about you if you make under a hundred grand. They're not fucking, if you make two one under 200 grand, they're not into you. So you got to fucking get in the middle. We all got to come together. Fucking taking these affirmative action and, and, uh, and fucking, uh, you know, abortion away. And, oh my God, what are we living in the fucking in medieval times? Burn the witches. That lady's a witch because I said she's a witch. Burn her. What the fuck? People are nuts out there. People are nuts all over the Bible. The Bible said. Fucking crazy. I don't know, man. I don't know what to do. I just wake up each morning, try to make strangers laugh, and uh, make their day better. That's all you can do, man. You know? I hope you have a good fourth until I do not blow your fingers off. Keep the candles lit. Keep the Roman candles lit. And I uh, hope to see you out at some shows out there. And uh, that's coming from your number one libertard, Dean Delray. You fucking libertard, Delray, you fucking surf. You fucking surfer sounding dude. Fuck you. <laughs> I love all you. Even you fucking blockheads. Not really. I don't love the blockheads. I'm just saying that right now. Candles lit. All right.